Hi there, so this video is to show you how to create um, multi-instrument, multi-channel tracks using contact um, within Logic Pro. Now, you may think, why on earth do we need another video on this on YouTube? There are hundreds of them. And yeah, there are, um, but I don't know about you, but I actually haven't been able to follow any of them. Or at least I haven't been able to make it work myself um, when I wanted to do something different than what was in the video. Um, and I kind of think I know the reason why for that, um, but I decided to do a video of my own um, that's a lot simpler than most of the ones on um, on YouTube. So this assumes that you've got Logic 9 um, and I think this works with uh, Contact, it definitely works with Contact 8, it will probably absolutely work with Contact 9 um, and it should work with earlier versions as well but I'm not too sure how older version you can use this with. So let's get started. So the first thing, when you create an empty project, the first thing you're asked is what kind of track you want to create. Um, you should create a software instrument track and you should create the number of tracks that you think you're going to need in terms of um, the number of contact instruments you're going to need. Now the maximum is 16, so I'm going to do 16 for the sake of this tutorial. And the second thing you need to do is click this multi-tumbral um, box here. Um, because if you don't, it will just create 16 different instrument tracks and you have to load a different instrument for every track, which is complicated. So make sure this is ticked. Most of the videos I've seen do tell you to tick this, but not all of them do, which is kind of weird. And hit create. And then what you have here are 16 instruments. Um, 16 instances, sorry, of one instrument. That's the key thing. There aren't 16 instruments. 16 instances of one instrument. They're all called instrument one. Now, if you open the instrument details here, if you look at this, vid this MIDI channel here, as you click down, that goes up. Okay, now this is really a throwback to the old days of MIDI, um, when the number of, maximum number of channels on a, on a MIDI synthesizer was 16. Um, I'm sure that modern computers can do much more than that, but we're, we're still using that old system. So the next thing to do is to create your, or insert, sorry, your... Um, your contact instance and you can see here, oops, I didn't mean to do that um, forget about that you can see here that you've got um, a few options, now I actually cre created stereo which is, was the wrong thing to do you should create either 16 mono or 16 stereo um, or you can do 8 of each um, but then it actually gets complicated if you do that especially with the auxiliary channels in, in Logic so you're best either to go with stereo or mono from the start and for this demo we're going to go to go with stereo. And what I've done now is I've actually created, um, I've inserted contact into each one of these. Now again if you scroll down you see that it still says that it's contact that's the instrument. And this is absolutely key. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to load in my instrument. So I'm just going to get rid of this channel mixer here. This is probably what you'll see without the channel mixer, but we'll go back to that later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert um, a piano, choir, um, and, and cello. I'm just going to use three instruments here and it, you'll kind of get the idea um, just to give you a, an idea about what's going on. So I'll load in the um, piano concert grand piano. I'm just going to minimize that. I'm going to load in um, a, uh, I know, cello will do, I suppose. And I'm going to load in choir. And we'll load in the, uh, the tenor choir. Give it some bass. Um, we'll load in the R's. It's always nice. Now, the first thing to check, just to be absolutely sure, is you see here in these instruments um, that you've got this MIDI channel here. So you've got MIDI channel 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. You want these instruments to be mapped also to MIDI 1, 2, 3, 4. So if you hit the toolbar here, you can see the MIDI channel here is A1. It's always going to be A because that's from your host. Uh, and it will be the first one will default to 1. And the second one will default to 2. And the third one will default to three. Now you can swap these around if you need to. If you delete one of these instruments and add in another one, you should make sure that it maps to what you have over here. But this should happen all automatically. Very, very simple. Um, and what that means is that when you play instrument one, 
we'll get the piano, instrument two, we'll get the cello, uh, I'm just going to um, just going to edit that, uh, not like that though. Oh now I've got it all confused. Um, I'm going to edit the cello just to make it a little bit of a faster attack. And then uh, the tenor choir. It's nice and easy. So each one of these is a different instrument. The problem is, is in the mixer, they all show as instrument one. So if you want to do different panning, effects, etc., you can't do it on one channel. So this is the problem everyone's trying to solve. But there's an easy way and there's a hard way. The hard way is to... Uh, actually, I'm not even going to explain the hard way. You can go and look at another video for that. The easy way is to, select, is to create the auxiliary channels. Um, I've only got three instruments here, so I'm only going to create three auxiliary channels. Um, if you had five instruments, you'd want to create four auxiliaries. If you had 16 instruments, you'd want to create 15 auxiliaries. You only need to create one less auxiliary as um, instrument instances that you have because the first track always counts as one of them. Once you've done this in Logic, it doesn't always work. And the reason it doesn't work is because in Contact, you also need to um, assign the instruments to the tracks. Now, this is a little bit annoying. Um, that you have to do this, you'd expect them to be linked, given that probably at least you know, half the people that use this software are going to be using a, a, DW, a DAW. But they don't do it by default. But there's a really easy way to do it, and this is where a lot of the other videos make a hash of it. All you do is hit this output, preset batch configuration, and click select batch functions and select clear output section and create one individual channel for each loaded instrument and you hit that and it creates a channel for each instrument now it's got some auxiliaries here as well you can ignore those you don't need to do anything with those but you just see we've got three instruments three channels now if I wanted to add another instrument actually forget about adding another instrument let's just do something that you would probably do and you probably create a little bit of music. Um, I'm just going to create a really quick loop here and uh, just I'm going to quantize this because I'm prone to make mistakes. Um, do four bars and um, just make 105 beats per minute. So I'm going to re record my um, piano first. Um, and, and don't worry about what this sounds like because it's just for illustrative purposes. So that's just a little bit of um, Mike Oldfield, if you recognize it. I'm going to take the metronome off and now uh, create a I do something with our cello. Pretty simple, huh? 
Okay, so now I've got my three instruments. Um, and by the way, Logic has tried to be helpful here and add uh, a click track a channel um, and another channel. I'm actually just going to delete this because I find that a uh, pain in the neck. Um, say if I want to add another instrument. So just for now, I'm going to name these so that I don't get confused. So that was my piano. This is my cello. And this is my um, choir. Um, and maybe I should do the same here. So piano, cello, choir. So I want to add another channel. So all I do is, it's going to be instrument four. First thing I'm going to do is actually add um, the instrument in contact. So I'm going to add a guitar, and I'm going to add a jazz guitar. Okay, and that should just going to check the MIDI channel four, MIDI channel four. So let's name this. Keep it nice and simple. Guitar. The problem is this is on my piano track, so I need to add in another auxiliary here. Now, so what do I do over here? Well, I could just add a channel, um, but this is a little bit complicated because there are things you need to select here, and it, there's a lot of options, and it looks really complicated. What you need to do again is just say clear output selection or section and create the channel again and hit go. Right. It'll just work. Believe me, it'll just work. Now you see it's here on auxiliary 3. And now I can record my guitar. that simple. Um, you don't need to fiddle around with these channel settings. Um, just every time you want to add something, just clear the output and reload. Now, occasionally if you delete add instruments and add instruments in, you might have to remap over here. Um, so it's probably a good idea to set up all your instruments ahead of time before you start doing things like adding compression and effects and other things on these channels because uh, it'll get confusing very quickly. But this is the simplest way to, to do it, and this is the way that I do it all the time. So thanks for watching. I hope this was useful.